Welcome to another Project Gorgon video on Base Bellagio. On today's video, I am going to give you guys some tips and tricks for beginners and new players. The first trick I want to give you is a pretty obvious one, but it's the most important. The tip is ask for help. The game has an amazing help channel with usually on average 200 people that are hanging out in here and helping new players. You can ask them anything and they'll give you help with. It's a very helpful community, a tight-knit community. And on top of that, go even further and look at the Wikipedia. Look at the, the forums. If you type down here forward slash wiki, and then type in rats, for example, or any word after this, cheese, skills, combat, it actually pops up the Wikipedia on your browser. Right now that's happening behind the scenes. It just all tabbed me out and I opened up the wiki with all sorts of cheese, cream cheese, cottage cheese, cave cheese. Use that in-game feature or just go to the wiki yourself. It's really going to help you out, especially with the next five or six tips because this game is huge. There are so many skills, so many different things to do. You need some direction. Tip number two is the favor system. The favor system is huge. You have to look at favor in this game as a form of currency. And you can even lose favor. I'm a necromancer. Somebody helped me get this very end game skill set early on in my young character and i have necromancy abilities i have a skeleton swordsman here i can't go into town and talk to a lot of npcs they get pissed at me and some of them even lose favor so you can lose favor but favor you you kind of bank and build up with characters and as you unlock more and more favor you can do hangouts with them with your offline missions that at first you would think are pointless. If some of these NPCs don't have a shop, they don't have training, why would you want to unlock favor for these NPCs? Because some of them unlock recipes when you do these offline missions. Some of them unlock abilities, skills, perks, items, weapons. So you always want to do favor missions, whether it's in-game missions or out of game, those little hangouts. All really good ideas. Right now we have to find room. Always want to be doing the quests because as you unlock this favor and different levels of it, comfortable friends, best friends, you're unlocking new and new features of the game. I had to become friends with an NPC here in Serbual Hills in order to unlock the surveying skill set, surveying. And that's going to lead to our next tip about money making. Let's transition right now. To make money in this game, there are so many different trade skills. I asked the game chat, where can I learn surveying? Because I assumed that I needed surveying to get flaky rocks, like flint rocks, to make beginner arrows. I was wrong. You could just buy those off of NPCs like Mushroom Jack. So I went down this path for the wrong reason, but now I'm making a lot of money surveying. Surveying, you use ink and parchment paper and crystals to go out and find more crystals. These crystals are worth 50 gold a piece. I have 11 of them. We just keep finding them. And then as we level up, now we could do orange mineral survey which helped me unlock things like citrine, 100 gold per, garnet, 100 gold per. And I guarantee you these things could be used for other stuff, you know, for crafting, for different skills. Everything in this game is useful. It's like every item you get is either used for a mission or crafting. You can make money with something called industry, an industry skill, which pretty much is just using the in-game 
work boards, okay? And as you level up industry, you get more and more bonuses for that. Um, one of the missions for these work orders right now is I have to get 10 rat teeth, and then I bring it to the boatman, I'll get 227 council, bust a bunch of industry experience. Candied apples. You can either buy these and complete the mission. It would come out to the same amount of money, roughly. Or you can make them. I'm, I'm going out there finding apples in the world, harvesting them from trees. And then I'm going to take sugar and water and cook my cooking skill and make these candied apples, fulfill this, and make some money. A lot of ways to make money in this game just by going out and farming creatures, getting equipment like this, and selling the equipment. You know, I, I always have around 4,000, 5,000 council, and I'm a noob, I'm a beginner. So it's easy to make money in this game. My next tip is unlock every skill you can. Skills are synergistic in this game. Having one set of skills helps other skills, like industry, for example. When I get to level 10, it'll give me plus one in carpentry, a whole different skill. Pretty crazy, right? Uh, let me give you some more synergies. Fire magic, you know, as you're leveling it up, giving you max power as long as you have it, uh, you know, equipped. But at level 23, you get a random plus one to your cooking ability because you, you can control fire, right? So you want to level up everything. There's only a few skills in the game that lock you out. They, it's like a permanent. One of those is lycanthropy. Becoming a lycanthrope, you are locked into that forever. Becoming a certain types of animals is permanent. Now this game, you can have a lot of different animal forms. Some of those are permanent. Some combat abilities, for example, you want to just... That's the whole point of having four different character slots for every... Some people that buy the game, you get four slots. And the reason is, is because there are certain builds that lock you out. Other than that, though, it'll warn you. The game warns you. It does a great job of saying, hey, don't take Lycanthropy because it's permanent. And there's not, and the game's in alpha right now, but they're not even intending to cure that when the game comes out. Other animal forms are semi-permanent. And you can cure them. It might be expensive or a quest line. The whole point is ones that are not permanent get every skill available. The reason is, right now, my highest skills are... Level 20 Necromancy, 23 Psychology. Because of this, I'm able to equip certain items, like my necklaces here. Psychology level 15 and Necromancy 15 are required to wear this, this amulet, this necklace. When I switch over to a whole new skill, Shield, for example, I want to start learning Shield soon because I guess it has some movement bonuses. It'll help you move quicker around the game. Basically like a minor form of a mount. Or a horse, you know? When I switch to that, I'm still going to be able to equip these items that I ha unlocked. I have these levels for, you know what I mean? So you're not completely resetting your character. Very intuitive system. I love it. And my final advice for this game. is try everything other games where they have limitations to skills this is kind of a an offshoot of the last tip of you know don't worry about getting locked only worry about the lockouts you know yada yada other games they lock you out and you can't try you know you're your mage your fighter your tank you don't want to try being a cook you don't want to try being a carpenter because it locks you out in other games this game, there are no lockouts in terms of trade skills, as far as I know. You know, your bard, your music um, creator, you know, the bard. You can be a cook, you could be a carpenter, you could be a blacksmith, an armorsmith. You can try all these different avenues to see what you like to make money with, to see what gameplay loops you like. I would highly recommend that. Use the Wikipedia, see what... You can unlock, you know, use that to find, like, my shield skill is unlocked by a certain NPC in Serbial Hills. Not anywhere else as far as I know. So you might need to use these kind of spoiler-esque 
methods to find out oh, where can I unlock shield because I want to try being a hammer and shield user but I have no idea where to do that you will eventually find find these NPCs they're not vastly hidden let's do a little combat right now and certain skills are more synergistic together you know, sword and board. I'm really like a necromancy psychology. It might not even be like a meta in the game. But I like it. It's fun. Try everything. And that's really the best advice I have for beginners. This is a really fun game. If you've been thinking about it, if you're on the fence about buying it, wait for a sale. I got this game at $20. A huge value I'm seeing and playing. But even for $40, this is a great game. No subscription. I would definitely try this game out if you're thinking about it. That being said, comment down below what you think about this game. If you want to try it. If you like the way the skills are. And other than that, put a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And I will talk to you on the next one. Thank you for watching.